we've made some progress here. I took the radio out of the chassis, put it on the contraption. I've got to find a name for this uh, for this thing. Anyway, the contraption, and um, took a few steps further. Let me go through them one by one. First thing I did is I tested the power transformer, and using the method that I describe in a separate video, which I'll link above. So power transformer is fine. In fact, I went one step further, the entire power circuit up to the selenium rectifier was checked and is fine. Next step was testing the output transformer, which is on the underside of the chassis. Again, I used that method that I describe on that separate video linked above and discovered that it too is fine. So that's two steps done. Just as an in-between job, I actually cleaned up uh, a lot of the dust from the chassis, which uh, if you recall, was pretty dusty on the inside. So this one's quite easy to clean. So I decided to get that job out of the way. And that too has been done. And some of the wheels have been oiled, lubricated, and everything seems to be running smoothly. After checking the, uh, the power circuit without power, I think, and having found that there are no shorts or anything catastrophic that I can see, um, I think it's time to do a power on check. And we'll do that as in the usual way with the dimmer uh, restriction. Get it up safely and see if we've got any audio, see if we've got any reception, just to figure out what it is we're facing here. Let's get ready for that. The radio is plugged in. The dimmer is ready. I have only the one lamp active, so 40 watts, this is the maximum restriction. Active, it's, I'll put that on. I have the radio off. And I have an antenna at the back. Volume somewhere halfway. And let's put it on. Speaker is connected. Let's put it on to medium wave. So here goes. It goes bright. Dim again. It's drawing 80 milliamps. 70. Do we hear anything? Put the volume up. The lamps have come on. Dial lamps are on, both of them. Oh, I can hear something. It's pretty dim. The volume is on maximum. It's pretty dim. That, what I've just done, is I've activated the uh, rotary, the internal antenna. Getting some noises, but the volume is on maximum, so this is very, very low. Just out of interest, there doesn't seem to be any hum. So let's see if we pick up anything. Well, getting something. Seems to be trying. Our medium wave is working. It's gone very quiet. It's almost like it comes again.
Well, it's pretty deaf, isn't it? And very low level. Let's try shortwave one. Nothing. Try shortwave two. Volume is still on max. Nothing. Shortwave three. There's a faint hiss. Bit of a crackle there. Nothing. We've got a deaf radio. It's making some of the right noises, but it's completely deaf. So, what could it be? Um, could be one of the tubes. The oscillator might be not might not be working. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the oscillator, make sure the oscillator is working properly on all bands. Um, yeah, that's the first thing I'm going to do. Let's get the oscillator tested. Before checking the oscillator, I went for something obvious. I uh, had a look at the capacitor, the cathode bypass cap, and this is it here. I found that this thing was completely off. So I decided just to do that. And the reason I did this first, you see I put that 47 microfarad in parallel with that resistor where this cap was. And the reason I did that first is that if this thing was leaking badly, I didn't want the uh, power tube to run away with heat and, and burn itself out. So just as a precaution, I changed that one there as well. So that, that's been done. The other thing I've done, I wanted to know the state of these capacitors, just how bad they were. So I looked for the first obvious one, which was one off the um, treble control. This is 16 nanofarads. And I looked for, I removed it, swapped it out. Um, this is a 10 and a 6.8 in parallel because I didn't have a 16. And I just wanted to check these things for value and leakage to see what we're facing with the other capacitors in the radio. And this thing is pretty awful. In value, what we actually get is 97 nanofarads as opposed to 16. So in terms of value, it's completely gone. Next, I decided to check the leakage. And this thing is 125 volts. So we'll put that on. And let's see what we get. Let's put it up to 100 volts, 100 volts. Whoa, at 100 volts, we're at half a milliamp leakage. If I put it up to 125, there's 120. So these things are dead. And if this one is like that, and uh, this one is on the tone control, and it doesn't really receive high voltage over there, um, so I can imagine what the other ones will be like. So these are all dead. Unfortunately, because these are Wimmer caps, they're not, uh, they're actually good, good quality, good brand, but it seems they're all way off. So that could be one of the reasons for our deaf radio. Now, to check for the oscillator with the little um, coil adaption that I've done for the oscilloscope here, I'm going to probe various parts of the, uh, the RF circuit here and see what kind of response we get on the scope we should be able to see somewhere where the um, where the signal is let's set this up so we can see it a bit better i think it's pretty clear that the capacitors here need changing and 
to try and worry about something else until I've done that simple part, I think is a waste of time. So I'm going to do the recapping on this radio. There aren't that many res uh, capacitors to change. So I think I'll get it, get going with that and then we'll come back and see if we've made any improvement. Well, we have some progress once again. I've done the recapping. All the um, caps that needed to be removed have been uh, replaced. And we have a difference here. A medium wave seems to have woken up a bit. Canary Islands. Rotate the antenna. We've got something. Let's try short wave two. We're on the 25 meter band. That's pretty good. Forty one meters. So forty nine meters. Let's go for short wave one. Short wave one is from thirteen to twenty six megahertz. Shouldn't get much. That's pretty clear.
Don't expect much up here. But let me show you something that I've found out. We're back on um, shortwave 2. And I'm here on the 41 meter bands where there are quite a few stations active at the moment. And here's the main tuning dial, the back one. And you can get a fair amount of selectivity from this. But what I've discovered this thing has got is a fine tuning vernier type tuner on the front here. So when you move the back one, you're moving the pointer fast. Okay. And then when you get to where you want to be, you fine tune it with this guy. The smaller one. So how this works is you've actually got this front one geared into the back one. So the back one does the main fast tuning and you can use it just to tune where you want to be. But once you get to where you want to be, you can then use the fine tuning at the front. And the difference between this kind of fine tuning and what I'm used to is that sometimes you have the main dial and then you have a separate fine tuning, which is basically a band spread. And this band spread doesn't have a direct correlation with the dial pointer. The difference here is that this guy actually moves the dial pointer as well because it's not separate from the main tuning gang. All this is doing is still tuning the main tuning capacitor, but it's doing it in a geared fashion. So you don't lose your correlation between your dial and which frequency you're pointing at. You just have a lot more control as to how that tuning capacitor is, uh, is being moved. And as I said, this really is the same tuning capacitor that's being tuned. There isn't a separate parallel one as you usually get, but it's just doing it more controllably and finely. I like it. I like it a lot. The other thing I found is that um, this thing has got two settings on the tone control here, this high tone control. I'll show you what happens. Let me put it onto something. You see how the volume dropped? Suddenly come up, dropped and then the tone works normally, you take it to the top, the switch is a bit dirty, but once you click it, and I think this is the early version of that, what we're used to seeing on the Grundix, the speech and music uh, selector. Anyway, it's a primitive sort of um, speech selector, and it makes quite a difference to the level of the, of the, of the signal. What we have so far is that the radio is now working on all bands, I have checked the tubes, they're fine, I have changed all the caps, I have uh, cleaned switches, basically done just about everything except a, an attempt at uh, aligning the, um, the IFs. The RF alignment is not necessary, I've checked with some signals that I've sent to here and they are pretty much spot on, you know, 1 megahertz is at 1 megahertz. 3 megahertz on that band is slap on 3 megahertz. So I've sent it through the signal generator and um, I don't need to change the RF alignment at all on any of the bands, which is great because what I found with that schematic that I have is that it, it really is not this radio. Um, there are quite a few changes, quite a few differences and I started off with my usual, you know, painting the parts that I checked and I started finding so many differences that I decided to forget about the schematic and just do it from experience. The one first uh, difference that I found is that um, this schematic has a normal output transformer. One of the windings is shorted to the, to the cabinet, to ground, 
and then the other one goes both to both anodes of the uh, of the uh, rectifier tube. This one is different. This one's the usual situation: full wave rectifier with a center tap going to ground, and then the two ends going to the um, to the tube. So you do get full wave re rectification, whereas on this circuit you're actually getting half wave rectification. Um, what this means is that there's less hum. The other thing that I forgot to mention earlier is I checked the, the caps here. There's absolutely no problem with these caps. Very, very low leakage. I did reform them for a little bit on that capacitor reformer. And um, it's, it didn't take much to get this thing down to a leakage. That's more than acceptable. So that is fine. Everything else seems to be in pretty good working order. There are very few. I've checked a lot of the components and they're all within spec. The resistors are slap spot on within spec. And this thing ends up as a pretty, pretty good shortwave receiver. The medium wave is not that great, but then nothing on medium wave at the moment is that great to receive anyway. But the shortwave is certainly very, very sensitive if you've got the right antenna. And what I'm using here is just a, a long wire external antenna and it's picking up pretty well. I'm curious to see how the reception is with the internal antenna, which is a coil wound on the back panel of the cabinet. So we'll see when that's in the cabinet. So I think uh, as far as the actual restoration is concerned, this thing is pretty much done. I'll probably find something else that I need to do. But in the meantime, I think I'm going to get ready for the RF alignment and see what we can do to just tweak the reception a little bit and the levels a little bit. I don't know if anybody's fiddled with the with the cans. These radios, the Sabas, have some pretty intricate um, IF cans. They're at the back here and they are they've actually got a cover on it. You actually take this cover off. There we go. The cover comes off and then you can see the screws in there with no wax on them. They're as clean as they, probably as clean as the day they came out of the factory. No wax was used here, which is a good thing. You don't have to clean the wax and everything else. So that should be pretty easy to do. Um, we don't have to worry about whether we're doing FM or AM. We've only got AM. So we've basically got, basically got two IF transformers, one there, one there. But this thing has got something different. This thing has got three screws for each IF can. It's the, you know, the primary coil, the secondary coil, but there's also the amount of, um, of um, separation between the coils. So this actually changes the width of your, the selectivity of that IF transformer. You can make it wider or sharper. Uh, so you basically got a, got a bandwidth control within each of these coils. And in our case, we're looking at shortwave, so we want as much selectivity and sensitivity as possible. So we really just need to worry about the, um, we need to worry about the, uh, the sharp uh, IF um, transformer setting. So I'll look at some of the instructions uh, on the general types of, uh, on the general instructions that they have for these types of radios and uh, Get ready for that for the next time. All right. Thanks for watching. See you soon.